Dan Gosling scores later on as the Cherries end their losing run with a victory at Stamford Bridge. Watch until the end of this review to hear all of my thoughts on today's match. Hello people, welcome to my channel, welcome to another video, this is my review of the game which took place earlier on today at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League between Chelsea and AFC Bournemouth, which AFC Bournemouth ended up winning by one goal to nil. So what I'm going to do for you guys in terms of this review is that firstly, I'll be giving you guys the lineup that Frank Lampard fielded at the start of the match, I'll then be giving you guys my thoughts on the match itself. And as always, I'll be including the positives and the negatives in which I took from the match. And lastly, I'll be giving you guys my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming Premier League fixture, which will be taking place next Sunday at White Hart Lane against Tottenham Hotspur. So without further ado, let's get straight into this review. So kicking things off with the lineup that Frank Lampard went with at the start of today's match. And as always, starting off, with the formation now i did watch some reviews on this game and apparently it was a 4-3-3 but i did some i did some um, research on google and it said that it was a 4-2-3-1 so i'm just going to stick with that shape for the sake of um not making you guys um or for the sake of not confusing you guys to be more accurate but anyways 4-2-3-1 according to google kepper and goal a back four from right to left of Cesar Aspilicueta, Antonio Rudiger, Kurt Zuma and Emerson Palmieri. A midfield five of Jorginho and N'Golo Kante in the two deep midfield positions with an, attacking mid with an attacking midfield trio from right to left of Willian, Mason Mount and Christian Pulisic with Tammy Abraham up front by himself. So that is the lineup that Frank Lampard went with at the start of today's match against AFC Bournemouth. Now for my thoughts on the match itself, and as always, starting off with the first half. <sighs> I actually thought that we made a pretty slow start to the match, and I'm sorry if, if you guys are going to call me negative, but that's just what I saw. Um, I really do think that we made a slow start to the match. We were giving the ball away very cheaply. We Some of our passes were, were misplaced. It was, it was horrible to see. At Bournemouth could have um, put the ball in the back of the net in the early stages of the match but luckily for us um, their the, the shot on target in the early stages of the match was saved by Kepa but um, it wasn't a great start to the match from us um, as the first half went on though I do think we started to gain or get get into our stride and started to attack them more although having having said that we really we really did not create too many clear-cut chances if any at all um, AFC Bournemouth though they were very they were very solid they were present throughout the entirety of the first half but in all honesty there really wasn't too much to talk about in the first half and that that can be said about the entire game to be honest it wasn't a great game um, to watch but anyways um, you have to give credit to AFC Bournemouth for the way they defended in um, in large parts of that first half so overall I say that we slightly edged it in terms of chances created because Bournemouth were sitting deep for the majority of the first half, but however, it wasn't it wasn't a first half where we were spectacular or anything like that. Because if we if we really were, then we would have put the ball in the, we would have put the ball in the back of the um, the net at least once. Um, another thing which I I found baffling was the fact that we didn't really take any long shots in the first half, and that's another thing that can be said throughout the entire game. Um, but anyways, like I said, it. I, I thought that we slightly ed I thought that we edged it slightly in the first half. But now for my thoughts on the second half. Slow start to the second half again. Um they they came at us, they came at us more. They um I think Eddie Howe instructed them to try and hit us on the counter attack and they could have scored before they actually scored in the eighty fourth minute. 
but luckily for us, um, we still had a bit in the tank at the back to stop them from doing so. Um, we were we were we were continuing to make sloppy mistakes, and we were, we were continuing to misplace passes. It was absolutely horrible to watch. Frank Lampard did try to change it. I can't even tell you what he changed the formation to when he brought on the substitutions. But he brought on Mateo Kovacic for Christian Pulisic. He brought on Callum Hudson Odoi for Willian. And he brought on Michi Batshuayi for Jorginho. And like I said earlier on in this review, we started with a 4 2 3 1 or 4 3 3. Um, I believe it was a 4 2 3 1. So I'm just going to say that we started off with a 4 2 3 1. So having him make those changes actually made me not sure what the formation was after those changes were made. So I, I'm not going to blame Lampard because you can see that he, he, he made three attacking changes and nothing happened, um, not too much happened to be honest. Um, honestly, as the, as the second half went on, AFC Bournemouth did look more, more and more a threat because they were they were getting more corners they were they were getting more set pieces we were committing a load of fouls it wasn't great to see but um they ended up getting the goal through Dan Glo Dan Gosling I can't even I can't even speak right now but yes they got the goal through Dan Gosling and for me it was it was smash and grab because they did not create all too many chances but if you don't take your chances and the other team does then they deserve to win it's as simple as that I don't necessarily think we were that bad today, but let me get let me get into the goal itself. Um, I can't remember who actually put the ball over the top, but it, the goal came from a corner. Um, I can't even remember what happened. It was, it, I can't even remember what happened, and it was such a short while ago. But I believe it came from a corner. Um, the, a ball came over the top of our defense. Our defense li literally stopped. They thought it was offside, but Dan Gosling was in an, was in an offside position. He held his run brilliantly, and he controlled it. He had his back to goal, and he lobbed it over Kepa. And despite Cesar Asp Aspilicueta's best efforts to stop it from going into the back of the net, it went into the back of the net. It did go to VAR because there was a suspicion. There was a suspicion. There was a suspicion of offside. Finally, that ro that rolled off my tongue nicely. But yes, there was a suspicion of offside. He was not offside. He was clearly onside. I don't know what our defenders were doing, um, letting him stay on side there, but um, he managed to get the goal, and it was um, a deserved goal for them to be honest because they took their chance. We did not take our chances. We we had many more chances than they did. We had we had more shots on target than they did. We had more shots, but we did not. We we really did not threaten AFC Bournemouth's goal all too much. But overall, I don't actually think we were that bad. I don't think we were excellent or particularly great but I don't think we were I don't think we were extremely poor I just don't think we were I just think we were average to be honest but I, I just had a feeling that Bournemouth were going to get the job done against us and like I said in my preview I said that we had to take our chances because if we didn't then I said that we had to score early and we didn't even score at all today and I did say, and I've said this in some of my previous videos, I said that we need to take our chances because if we don't, then these teams will come and get results against us. And that is exactly what's happened today. But, but <sighs> I can't even speak. Now, in terms of the positives and the negatives in which I took from the match, starting off with the positives, believe me, I really did struggle to find a positive from today's match. And I know that kind of sounds like a contra that I know that sounds like a contradiction because of the fact that I have come out and said that we weren't too bad today. But I do believe that we were present for a large um, portion of the match. I do think that we did um, create enough chances to put the ball in the back of the net at least once, of course, at least once. But we just didn't take them and we got punished for it. I'll keep saying it um, because that was literally the story of the match. But we were present. We were present for large parts of the match, and it wasn't as bad a performance as we've seen in recent matches. Most notably, most notably against West Ham United and Everton in the past couple of weeks or so. But yes, we were present for large parts of the match, and that is the only positive in which I took from today's match. And the negatives in which I took from today's match, the first negative in which I took from today's match is the fact that we did not take our chances and we paid the ultimate price for it i.e the three points and another defeat at home and another premier league defeat um that's all i'm gonna say on that one and the second 
the second um, negative and the final negative in which I took from today's match is that some of our play was slop sloppy and we looked as though we were forcing it because we kept we kept trying to go with the long ball, it just wasn't working. Tammy Abraham was not getting the ball, he had about three or four defenders on him. He was isolated throughout the majority throughout the majority of the match today. I, I'm I'm not gonna say that he had a great game, but I'm not gonna blame him because he did not get a lot of service today. And he was trying his best. He really was trying his best. But yes, some of our play was sloppy and it was forced. And it was really pissing me off, to be honest. Um, I, I almost fell asleep throughout the match because not only am I physically tired, but that match, some of our play was um, very frustrating to watch. But that is it for my thoughts on the match. Let me know what your thoughts on today's match are in the comment section below. And as always, I will do my best to respond. Now to conclude this review, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming Premier League fixture, which will be taking place next Sunday at White Hart Lane. Yes, I will call it White Hart Lane against Tottenham Hotspur. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yes, we do have just over a week to prepare for this game, but with the mistakes in which we've been making recently, a Jose Mourinho team is not a team in which you'd want to come up against. Um, but anyways, everyone involved with the first team will have to find a way to tactically outdo Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho has managed some of our players, i.e. for example, William, Kurt Zuma, Cesar Aspilicueta and Pedro. I can go on, um, Andres Christensen if I'm not mistaken. And has managed against a large group of our players, so he will most likely have a way to stop them from having any sort of influence in our match against Tottenham Hotspur next Sunday, I do fear for the team. Normally, I'm not confident against the big teams because, like I said in my preview, that's just how I am. I'm not necessarily a confident person. Um, I'm actually an introvert, so I tend to be quite reserved. I tend to lose energy around large groups of people, and I do get quite anxious as well. But yes, um, it, it, it's a given that it's going to be a tough game. Coming up against the Jose Mourinho side is never an easy thing. In recent times, we've not done we've not done particularly badly against Jose Mourinho teams when he, of course, was with Manchester United. But um, he has beaten us in in recent times as well, um, and he has tactically outdone us before. Um, most notably, that time where he beat us, or, or when mo or most notably when Manchester United beat us two 0 at Old Trafford on the 16th of April 2017, where we were absolutely shocking. I, if if we played a way in which we did, um, particularly for the goal, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna use the goal as a microcosm here. But if we if we if we play the way, or if we allow if we allow ourselves to go to sleep or fall asleep for a small amount of the game, or or for a small amount of or for a little or for a little bit of the game. And Tottenham Hotspur pounce on that, then I can see us losing because Tottenham Hotspur are a fantastic team. They are doing they they are doing really well at the moment. Yes, they are yet to play their Premier League game. They are playing tomorrow against Wolverhampton Wanderers, but um, they they do have a fantastic team and they have been they have really been doing well of recent. And I believe their form is a lot better than ours. But Credit to AFC Bournemouth, they did a job on us, they did deserve to win, I'm not going to be salty about it because that's not who I am, but yes, um, that is it for my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming game against Tottenham Hotspur next Sunday, believe me I am fearful for these group of players, let's hope that the, um, the coaching staff really come up with something and let's hope that we do some hard work in training, but yes that is it for this review, I hope you enjoyed it, like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you're new and I'll see you all very soon for some more videos, I believe my next video will be will be a combined 11 with some of my friends who are Tottenham Hotspur fans, that should be fun, I've not come up with a name for a series yet and I should be coming up with a name for a series very soon, I'll let you guys know, um, I will be releasing some graphics very soon, but anyways, come on you blues, Come on, Frank Lampard, and peace.